Hi everyone, it's Marissa here from Rise High and I am joined with, I'm joined by Adrian Cartlin from Cartlin Law today. Today we are talking about land tax. <laughs> we, uh, land tax was a big topic in South Australia prior to Christmas and then we took a bit of a break from it and coronavirus and COVID-19 sort of took over. But now there are some deadlines coming up in regards to the land tax changes in South Australia that it's really important that we cover mm -hmm. and that you're aware of. So I've asked Adrian to come back. Thanks for coming back, Adrian. My pleasure. And today we're hoping to provide you with a really practical guide as to some steps you can take and actually what you need to do before 30 June. And there are some things that you need to do even earlier than that, before the 3rd of June. So we just wanna make sure that today's session is really practical to get you ready for the land tax changes, which will of course be coming into place uh, 1st of July. 1st of July, 2020. So we don't happens. have long now. Time has gone quickly. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for joining us, Adrian. My pleasure. Thank you for having me again. I'm, I'm glad to be back here talking about land tax. Yes, yes. Um, look, what I thought we would do is just start with a quick summary of what the land tax changes are. Mm -hmm. Of course, we did do a very detailed live session back in December 2019 mm -hmm. where we actually covered all of the changes in detail so we'll put a link to that uh, that video in the comments below but just for the purpose of today can we just quickly do a quick summary of what yep. the land tax changes are and what that means sure so from a high level um, land tax used to be assessed on a an ownership basis and so it would look at who was the owner of, of particular properties, is it owned by a uh, trust one or trust two? How much does how much do these trusts own? And then they would uh, be taxed at a marginal rate of land tax. Now, um, now the overall theme is that that it's trying to look through to some individuals who underlying um, have the underlying ownership of those properties, and and then um, tax them on their interests plus any trusts or companies or other entities that they, they have a proportion of that interest. Um, and so, um, and if there are trusts, for example, that we, we can't be clear who the owner is, then there is a surcharge rate applied, and um, which is you know, um, half of 1% increase in land tax. So, um, so it's, it's kind of a totally different way of, of taxing. If we remember, this was brought in supposedly as an anti-avoidance um, provision, just a, a minor tweaking. Um, it's as a total rewrite of, of how things how things work. So there, there's also been a changing of the rates. So the the highest rates have decreased, um, which is like a, a benefit if you um, have a lot of property that was already aggregated together. And so you know, if you own a shopping centre, you're absolutely a winner out of this. Um, on the other hand, for for mum and dad, um, um, how most people have dealt with the Having, with South Australia having the highest rate of land tax in the country is that they had um, disaggregated their properties by owning them in a number of different entities. Trusts, um, you know, mum, dad, mum, dad together, trust one, trust two, trust three. Um, and, and so now that's, that's a lot more problematic. So, so the rules change halfway through the game. Exactly. <laughs> Which exactly. was of course why we were so mad. Yeah. And you know, lobbying so hard against the changes. And and, um, uh, and uh, then there's been some transitional transitional relief brought brought in, but that doesn't really apply. I think we're going to, we're going to talk about that shortly. Yeah. Um, then. Um, so I guess just to summarise the changes. So like you said, we've had changes in the land tax rates. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the land tax rate, rate. The land tax rates have actually come down. Yes. But we've had an introduction of aggregation. Yes. Which is pooling together different ownerships that were previously considered separate mm. for the purpose of land tax and now going to be grouped together for the purpose of land tax, which might mean that even though the rates are lower, you might be paying a higher rate of tax because now your land value goes into the next bracket. Definitely. So, um, and then we also had the introduction of trust surcharge rates, which Correct. you just mentioned. Yes. So that means that for any property owned in a trust, where you haven't nominated a beneficiary, the government's going to charge you a higher rate of land tax. Yeah. Is that right, Adrian? Correct. And and for any um, property that's purchased in a trust, 
um, where, the, where the property is purchased in the trust after 16th of October um, 2019, or if the trust is established after 16th of October tw uh, 2019, so for, uh, which is the date of the introduction of the legislation. So basically there's a grandfathering of the old, old trusts and old properties, and, um, and so that's something that we need to deal with as, as well. And, and if we can, we can talk about um, how you might purchase property going forward. Um, and, uh, the can, we, can we leave that to the end? Correct, yeah. I, yeah, I would yeah. do want to cover that because I think that's really important, but I just want to um, just make sure that we've covered the changes first. So what you were just talking about was the October 2019 date is quite significant because if you owned property in a trust before that date, mm -hmm. you have the added advantage of being able to nominate a beneficiary. Mm -hmm. And I would like to explain that further and go through that with sure. you as we as we progress through today's session, because that's going to be an important consideration that people are going to have to consider yeah. before thirty June. Correct. So the uh, the practicalities of, of how to go about that nomination. Yep. Uh, shout out to Emily, Costa, Peter, Twee, Michelle, Andrew. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We are taking questions live today, so please feel free to put your questions below and we would love to answer them. It's not every day that you get free advice from a lawyer, so I suggest you take advantage of it and, and uh, type your questions in the comment section. So, uh, like I said, we've just covered a quick summary of the land tax changes. You can see a full video on this. Uh, in a long conversation that Adrian and I had before Christmas in December 2019, the link is below. Um, I want to move on to the transitional fund because mm. there are going to be many people that ha are going to have increased land tax bills yep. as a result of the changes. We've acknowledged yep. that. What the government did to help to alleviate that, um, that pain, I guess, yep. is they had a transitional relief fund where they said that people whose land tax bills increase by more than $2,500 can get a 50% discount mm -hmm. off that increased amount in the first year. Now, because of coronavirus, they've actually upped the relief to 100%. Mm -hmm. Whilst this sounds good, I just want to quickly get your thoughts on it because I think it's a bit of fluff, really. But keen to just get your thoughts on it and we will talk yeah. more about the transitional so, fund and how to apply but let's just touch so, so on that. What, what, what I found quite interesting is is that this transitional fund was one of the changes to the legislation that got it over the line. Yes. Um, and so uh, this was supposed to be the thing that helps all of the mum and dads mm. um, uh, deal with their, their massive increase in land tax. So um, unfortunately though it only applies to individuals. So um, now, so if, it doesn't if, apply to people that own property in a trust. Correct. Well, well, it, it applies doesn't apply to the trusts, and um, and so you know, if for some reason you're an individual and you know, um, and your the amount of land tax that you, that you are paying because of property that you hold in your in your name goes up, then you'll um, you will get a, a rebate. So there's a couple of ways that it, that an individual might have their um, land tax go up. Um, or, uh, one, it could be um, they get nominated as a beneficiary of a of a trust, and so therefore it's it's counted as though they own some more property. So in that uh, case, would the relief fund apply? Um, it'll apply to the land tax that, that that's due in their name. Yes. Um, and including the land tax for the property that they've been nominated for by yes, the trust. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and. Um, but more, uh, another scenario is that it's going to be, um, you know, so mum and dad, so mum holds a property, dad holds a property, and um, mum and dad together held a property. Now previously, that would be mum ownership, dad ownership, jointly separate ownership. So and, and three separate ownerships yeah. for the purpose of land tax calculation. Yeah. And so that no would be just though. now. No, now it would be it's it's mum um, and she gets all of her property plus half of the joint property. Yeah. The same for dad. And so that means so they're going to go up. Now, one of the things and I actually that's a big one because we've got quite a few clients that are in that boat where they don't have any trusts or companies, but they have owned property jointly with a partner, yep. and now it's going to be aggregated with their individual property, and that's going to cause a massive mm. increase in their individual land tax yep. bills. So the transitional fund might help them. Totally. Where I actually see the transitional fund is, is a bit of a risk is um, because 
um, it's, it's not quite clear um, how it works and there's so many other changes that, that, that have come through. I think people, there's a lot of risk that people will become complacent. Yeah. And they go, oh cool, we're getting 100% of tax relief in this year and so they don't do, take any action. Yes. Now, so we've got, um, so um, they, they might get a, um, a, a nasty kick um, realizing that if they don't make nominations by 30th of yes. June this year, then it's going to apply to them. And, and part of that trick is, is that um, the nomination deadline was extended till 30th of June 2021. Yeah. So you can make nominations then, but if you don't make a nomination before 30th of June this year, it doesn't apply to this year. Yeah. So so let me give you an example there. So so, so let's say um, someone has a property in their name and they have a property in a, in a discretionary trust that was established before 16th of October uh, 2019. And so they're going to make it. They go. I could make a nomination f um, for that trust into my name mm. that would increase the amount of land tax and I go but but I'm going to claim 100% of the transitional fund but they say oh you know what I've got till 2021 to yeah. make that nomination but then they miss out on the benefits for yeah that. so they'll be taxed at the surcharge rate this year yeah and um, then they'll miss out on the increase uh, on the um, on the transitional fund um, the 100% transitional fund and sure they can make a nomination um, next year but, but it won't be backdated. Correct, it won't be backdated. I think the point you made is so good in that I think that a lot of people have heard this statement from the Premier saying there'll be 100% relief on increased land tax bill and have got complacent yeah. about needing to do anything. But the reality is that it's not going to apply for many people and it's only a one-year thing. Yeah. So you do need to make sure that you're very proactive with this and that you're on top of it and that you do the necessary, do take the necessary steps before 30th of June to make sure that you all of your ducks are in a row yeah. um, and everything's done correctly because you can't rely on that transitional relief fund. Correct. And that's why I wanted to sort of bring that up. So yeah. well, thank you and, for raising that And, and it's particularly hard because at the moment, you know, um, uh, with COVID, you know, there might be downturns in trading, people might have tenancy issues, they might have, um, you know, there's all, all sorts of um, other federal tax changes and um, that, that, that people are, are looking at. And, you know, there's just general disruption in people's lives. So, um, you know, now we've, you know, we've just had an intense burst of six or eight weeks of COVID um, tax work and now it's like no we've now we've got um, uh, six weeks of intense land tax work and I have to quickly change change gears <laughs> yeah you'll, so. be, you'll be very busy um, and there is also because of the coronavirus as well as increasing the amount of relief available for land tax the other change that the government announced was a deferral of land tax payments yeah. So just let's stress that that's not actually meaning that your land tax bill is going to be reduced. It just means that you can potentially defer payments on some of your land tax bills. So, which you probably can't. You, you could probably do anyway. Like I yeah. don't see it as particular so it's relief. Not, it's really just fancy marketing from the Co state government correct. Yeah. to say it's, that it's, it's like if you want a deferral on your land tax amount, like you can call up and enter into a payment arrangement. And this is more saying that everyone gets an automatic payment arrangement of pushing it back. It's like, but. Is but it automatic or do you have to ask for it? Oh, you it? need to ask for it, yeah. Yeah, so you yeah. still have to ask for it. So Correct. So it's not really any different. Yeah. It's um, just a bit of fancy marketing on the on Correct. behalf of the state government yeah. trying to think, pretend that they're doing something extra for us. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, look, we've got quite a few new people joining in. Hi, Mauricio, Richard, Katie, Damien, Alan. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We're keen to answer your questions live today, so please put them in the comments section below. So we've talked about a summary of the land tax changes. Uh, the, the, the COVID relief, so you can get 20, oh. 25%. Oh, there's off. one more. What? Yes, I forgot. Well, yes. the, 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 uh, forget, because, uh, forget because it's, it's quite forgettable. Um, <laughs> so if you have um, a, uh, if you're a landlord and your tenant is having um, is, uh, problems due to COVID, say they've had a downturn and they're not paying you, um, which is um, which is a kind of complex thing in itself because we still don't have legislation through um, saying how commercial tenants can um, negotiate and, and, and what the rules are and, and potentially for residential tenants as well um, if you're um, if they're, if they're not paying or they're severely affected then you can get a 25 percent decrease in land tax does that only for, apply if you own commercial property or is that well, also commercial for also residential? For residential okay so if your tenants are not paying your rent and I'm assuming that you have to prove that, be able to yeah. prove that, 
um, then potentially you can apply for a 25% reduction in your land tax bill. Yeah. But I'm assuming that's only for the next six months. Uh, it's for the um, uh, the time frame. I thought it's for the um, for the current bill or, or for the next bill. For the next bill, yeah. so one quarter of uh, land tax relief. No, I think it's for one one year. I Is it? need to okay. check on, on 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 the year because because land tax is assessed annually. So maybe I we'll check on that. Yeah. I'll put some notes in the comments uh, below about that. I yeah, I assume session. that it's uh, it, it's annually. Um, and again, it's one of these things that's it's not really well set out. So I um, guess that was the silver lining of coronavirus, is that we did get a little bit of extra land tax relief. Well, um, the, the problem is, is that you can only get it if you're, if you're not getting if your you're rent. Se if you're severely yeah. affected, yeah. impacted by the land tax. Changes. Yeah, and, and well, 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 no, it's and like the, if, the, yeah, if you're, rent. yeah, if you're, um, yeah, if your tenants aren't paying you, and in which case it's like, well, it's it's, and it's really not much. Yeah. Like you know, considering if someone's um, uh, not paying you, um, uh, you know, just just say your 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 general your your rent is going to be say four or five percent of the property's value, and uh, land tax is going to be you know say between one to two percent of the property's value and you're getting a quarter of that off so you're, you're getting a tiny fraction but you're losing a lot more rent correct so you might lose five percent and you get like 0.25 percent yeah i understand so it's not ideal but it is a little bit better than what we were left with you know yep. at the beginning of this year so I guess we've summarised the changes, we've summarised a bit of the relief package that is available and now what additional relief has been announced post-coronavirus. Um, I really want to sort of skim over or really touch on some points and some advice that we can give to the viewers on what are some of the things that they can do to reduce their land tax their yeah. land tax implications, I guess. We did cover this in very big detail in our session that we did in December, but I would just want to remind mm -hmm. everyone about these things. So the first one that we talked about was, I think just making sure that people get really good advice from an accountant or a lawyer mm -hmm. immediately. Yeah. Um, how important is that, Adrian? Well, I think it's important, uh, and, and it's important to model through what you're doing. Yes. Um, and so um, so uh, I've produced a, um, a, a land tax uh, modeling tool a land tax planning tool, um, and it's on our, our website, um, cartlandlaw.com. So if you go to cartlandlaw.com and then click on land tax planning, um, there, there's a tool there. It's, it's free for you to use. You simply enter in your properties. You um, enter in who they're owned by. So I might say you know, Adrian Cartland owns, um, you know, property uh, Blackacre, and it's valued at this amount. And then, and then my trust, um, Alpha Trust, owns Whiteacre, and it's valued at this amount. And then I can. Um, what I can do is, is I can see how much land tax I'm going to get. Then I can choose whether I make nominations. Um, so you can say like nominate this person or nominate that person. And so you can easily play around and work out like what is the, what is the best way of doing my, my nominations. Should I nominate my son? Should I nominate my daughter? Should I nominate myself? Should I nominate no one? Yeah, and I've had a play with the calculator that Adrian's developed and it's fantastic. And like you said, it's free. We are going to put the link to the calculator in the comments section below. Mm -hmm. So one thing that you must all do is hop onto this calculator, enter in all of your property's details and really have a play with it to see what the optimal situation is for you. Now, in the situation where you are thinking of potentially changing ownership, because one of the yeah. things I love about your calculator is that it's really easy to see what happens if you change ownership. Mm -hmm. um, and changing ownership between now and 30 June is still an option. Yes. But you need to do it quickly. Um, but I love that it shows what happens if you change ownership. But if you are gonna consider changing ownership, it is also important that you consider all the other implications, not just land tax. You've got asset protection, you've got the income distribution. You know, what other things do people need to consider before they consider changing ownership? Well, well a big one is gonna be, uh, um, stamp duty will be the, a headline one that people will think about. And mm. so a lot of people go, oh, let's, That's true. let's deal with stamp duty. Um, I've had a number of yeah. clients say, we've got commercial property, um, what do we do with that? Uh, you know, we, we, we can transfer that, um, so there's no stamp duty on commercial property, you can easily mm. switch that around. But um, for resi, it's not so simple. No, um, although you know, in in some cases it, it will it will make sense, and 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 to work out whether it makes sense to make a transfer for you, or you know, or maybe you transfer one property, um, and and out out of a number of them, and um, and so you can play with our model and, and work out whether that works for you. 
Um, um, but to be, the thing you need to be careful of uh, once you get past stamp duty is calculating, um, uh, do I have a capital gain sitting in there? Yes. Um, and, and how do I do that? Yeah. Now, if it's commercial property, you know, maybe you can get some, like the small business capital gains tax concessions um, and, and pay no capital gains tax there. Maybe um, you can just, maybe, like maybe the property market is, has gone down at the moment and so maybe it's, t maybe it's a good time to transfer. I think, I think what would be good is, because I mean everyone's got different situations, what I suggest is that you actually go onto this calculator and you have a play with it yourself. And if you are thinking after your play with this calculator that you do need to change ownership of some of your assets, I'd really, really encourage you to actually get some good advice about that. And really, yeah. like Adrian said, there's so many implications of changing mm. ownership. So you're really going to need to get good advice from someone like Adrian or your accountant. Um, but you're also going to need to get advice from your mortgage broker because changing an asset that has a liability over it or a mortgage over it is going to require the bank's involvement. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's not always going to be possible in the short time frame that we have left before 30 June. So it is something that you need to do immediately. So hop onto that calculator yep. this afternoon and make sure that you reach out. Oh, sorry. sorry, technical difficulty. Uh, make sure that you reach out and get some good advice about that. So that's the first step. So, so I, I do land tax planning every year and, and every year I have some transactions that are do it, that we're, that we're cutting right to 30th of June. And the thing that's all there, everyone's always waiting for is um, getting the bank's approval. You know, so we yes. can always like, you know, burn, burn through time and get advice and structuring out and, and say, this is what you need to do. And, um, but, but getting the banks, they, they work in their own ways. So coming And especially at the moment with, I guess, with the impact of the coronavirus, banks are pretty slow at the moment. So that's why it's even more important to really fast track this and get onto it immediately. Yep. Um, the next thing is to, I mean, I guess the next option that people have is they do have the option of selling property before 30 June. Mm -hmm. It's not a great time to sell right now. Um, although opens and auctions have just started to open up again, which is good. Yeah. But that is an option that you do have. Just in relation to that, to if someone does plan to sell a property before 30 June, the property has to actually settle the sale has to settle before 30 june well, so that it's not included is that right well not well it needs to settle um and then there's a um um but it doesn't need to settle before 30th of june what um but what there is is there's some there's a, a adjustments and so what you'll do is you make a declaration that you have sold it and okay. you up, and, and and then you can upload that you have like the, the 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 sale contract how do you make the declaration uh it's in um revenue essays um, uh, like deep within their documents. And, okay. and so I've been playing around with their online portal and stuff. And so you can say, here's this property that I own. And one of the prob one of the things that you can select is that you have sold it. Okay, so you have to select that and then yeah. upload a sale contract yeah. to show that you've sold it. Now, okay, so effectively you need to have the, the sale contract signed yeah. by the purchaser before 30 June you, you need to and have preferably settled before 30 June but you might be able to get away with it if it takes yep. a few days over. Yep. Okay, so that's good. So that's the other thing that you can consider. We've talked about changing asset ownership. Now that would have to be done before 30 June yep. um, and that, like I said, that involves speaking to your mortgage broker, yep. making sure that you're getting good advice before you actually take those changes. Um, now, there's also there's also a couple of other concessional packages that we haven't discussed, which is the affordable housing concession and the affordable community housing land tax exemption pilot. How do investors potentially apply for these and are they worth applying for? Um, they're really complex and um, there's like a hundred places for them and... So only a hundred property owners will get these yeah, concessions? Yeah, that's, that's the way I read it. A hundred in South Australia. Yes. Yeah. So uh, um, it's... You know, uh, and I believe if you're really that, interested, like it, it's, yeah. you know, it, it's been 20 minutes of technical stuff to, to so go through it. It's, it's a, my understanding it's, is that you... Um, you do also have to offer discounted rent, so they are for affordable affordable housing. So yeah. it's a, it's uh, getting the concession in in return for discounted rent to certain tenants that fall within the category. Mm. And at this stage, you can't actually apply to get the concession, but you can register your interest. 
So if you are interested in registering your interest for that, you should at least just register your interest, yep. but not count on getting any relief at this point because we there are still so many unknowns with that. Yeah, and it's it's a bit of a process, but but for you know for for some people who are developing property, like that'll be worthwhile. Yeah. Now the the other big one, and this is probably the biggest thing, if you do own property in trust, is that you have the ability to nominate a beneficiary if mm-hmm. you owned property before October 2019. Yep. And we did get a question through from Twee on how do you make a nomination. So I want to actually spend a bit of time now on nominations. Mm-hmm. Uh, firstly, I want to talk about how should someone decide whether a nomination is a good mm-hmm. idea. And then if they do decide that a nomination is a good idea, what steps do they need to take mm-hmm. to actually make that nomination? So so one, when you're making a, dis- a decision, you should use our calculator. You know, work out how much land tax you're going to use uh, and, and you can you can test it out and go, what happens if I nominate person A and then and then remove it. Um, and um, so some sort of rules of thumb, you know, you, you're going to have a couple of, pro- like um, um, if you have a number of properties you know, say a half a dozen or so, you'll probably run out of people that you can nominate. So, yes. if, you know, for mum and dad, um, you know, who have got you know three or four properties, you can probably make a nomination or two, and um, and that'll be your optimum. Just as a b- very broad guideline, when you've got more than four or five properties, there's gonna there's gonna be some properties that you won't want to make nominations for, and so and it's and so. Um, it's actually better in a number of circumstances to not make a nomination and incur the trust rate of search, uh, the, the trust surcharge and so the higher trust rate of tax because it'll disaggregate the property from um, um, it'll disaggregate the property from, from the others. So for example, if you're buying you know, um, uh, 10 properties um, that are worth $250,000 each, um, for uh, land tax purposes, um, you know, it's better to set up ten different trusts and, and purchase them in a different one each, rather than have one person own them um, and not so make a nomination. Owning property, so what, from what you're saying, like owning property and trusts is still a good idea. Yes, and it is still a good land tax strategy yes. moving forward, even though these rules have changed. It, it it is, but there's basically like there's a but there's a, a limit threshold. to how much you should own in a trust. Well, in a single trust. Mm, in a single trust, yes. so having multiple trusts, though it, it does. So, so you still so you still want to have multiple trusts. Mm. And it's more basically what what's happened is it's gone. Um, owning property in a trust makes more sense if you have you know three or four properties. Yeah. Um, whereas the first few, you know, uh, what's going to happen for the people who are you know so one to one to four properties probably won't want to buy them in a trust for land tax purposes, but they will probably want to for asset protection purposes. Yeah. So. Um, so there, there's a couple. We'll come back to, to what you yeah. can do that. Yeah. But but the practical things for, for once you've decided how to make a nomination, you, you've gone through and you said I'm going to nominate, um, you know, uh, trust one is is going to nominate um, it will nominate um, that, you know, husband um, is the beneficiary, and trust two is is going to nominate that wife is the beneficiary. Um, so first of all, the nomination applies to all of the properties in there, so you can't separate out White Acre and Black Acre. And That's that, a really good point. So if you are choosing to nominate an individual, then every single property in that trust is allocated to that individual for the purpose of land tax. So mm-hmm. that's a really important consideration. Yep. Um, and so then to make the nomination, so you would have got a, uh, a letter from Revenue SA about now. Probably looks something like this. Mm-hmm. And um, here's one we prepared earlier. <laughs> one Revenue USA prepared earlier. Yeah, revenue. And so um, uh, it's going to have some ownership numbers on there. You can go on and register for Revenue USA. Then you're going to enter in um, your, um, your details, and then it will come up and say, "We think we, you have these properties." You're going to list the properties, and you're going to say, "List the, this property is held by a trust." And then it's going to ask you for for a whole bunch of substantiation of that trust. So you're going to have to upload the trust deed and any variations. You're going to have to upload proof of purchase. So if you purchased the property 40 years ago, and um, it's you know, and it's they're still going to ask you for the memorandum of transfer. If you've got it, if you don't have it, um, then you're going to need to find supplementary 
things. So you might need to show that um, here's the financial documents of the trust that, that show that the property is owned in this trust and pays tax in there. You might want to show some minutes of resolution, some contracts. Um, there's, uh, there's, there's a list of things that, that Revenue SA will accept. Normally, you, would, you, know, um, you, you wouldn't need to provide these things. Um, you would just make a nomination that the property is held in trust and then um, um, and, and provide them only if they're audited. But, um, but now, you're mm. going to need to provide this for every property, for every trust. And, and then once you've uploaded all these things, then you say, I nominate this particular person. Now be careful when you do that, because once you've done it, you've done it. And, that, and it can't ever change. The nomination no. can't ever change unless that person dies or I think also yep. in the case of divorce. Is that yep. correct? Correct. So I and guess- you, And you need to lodge a statutory declaration from that person. Yes. And you need to upload that declaration. So the person that you're nominating mm -hmm. needs to accept the nomination. Yes and they need to um, sign and, and declare that they accept the so nomination. So there's going to be a lot of administrative work yes. um, just doing this over the next, um, well, that they want it before 3rd of June. 3rd of June it has to be done by. So these letters that were sent by Revenue SA were supposed to arrive early April. <laughs> uh, now they've only just started coming through yeah. and I know that there's many of our clients that still haven't received their letters from Revenue SA. If you're a landowner, whether you own the property in your individual name or a company or a trust, you will receive a letter from Revenue SA, which will have, like Adrian said, the ownership number. Mm -hmm. It will also have a unique registration number that will allow you to actually go onto the Revenue SA online portal and log in all your details. Mm -hmm. You have to do this whether or not you are planning to make a trust nomination. Yep. Is that right? Yep. You have to. You have to. You log have in. to go through and you have to pro fill in all the details, provide all the information. Now it's not a quick process. No. I think I, I spent a bit of time playing with it on the weekend, and just for one property and one trust, it took me about twenty to thirty minutes. And you've got to upload quite a few things, so it's not a five-minute job. So you've got to really set some time aside. One thing that we've done to help you is we have created a document with step-by-step -step instructions and screenshots from the Revenue SA online portal. And we're going to have that as a giveaway today from the session. So there will be a link below as to how you can access those instructions and screenshots to help you through that process uh, because that might just help make it a bit easier. Mm -hmm. So I guess just to go back to my question, how do you know whether to nominate someone? The answer I think you gave was, is really, it's gonna be different for everyone. In yeah. some instances, it's going to make sense to nominate an individual. Mm -hmm. In other instances, it's gonna make sense not to nominate and pay yep. the trust surcharge. Yes. And that's where your calculator comes in. Correct, yep. So, so using your calculator, we can work out what the best option is. Mm -hmm. And you can only nominate like one person per trust. Yes. So if you have different properties in a trust, um, they can't have different beneficiaries. And we've seen that, uh, the, uh, Andrew, thank you for that question. Um, and um, uh, but, but unfortunately, if trust one owns Blackacre and Whiteacre, um, uh, you make a nomination for the whole trust. Mm. And so both Blackacre and, and Whiteacre will, will be um, deemed to be owned for land tax purposes by and the person who you nominate. And I'm guessing that just in that example of the trust owning Blackacre and Whiteacre, let's say we then buy Brownacre yes. and we add a property to that trust, if we have nominated Andrew as the beneficiary of that trust, does that nomination also apply to future properties bought by that trust? Well, if that future property was bought before 16th of October um, 2019, then yes. Oh, okay. But, but unfortunately, for, um, for new properties, that you purchase in, in, in an old trust, um, they're carved out. So and they so will have always the have the surcharge. surcharge rate. Yeah. So that's going to get really complicated. There might be some trusts where properties purchased before October 2019 yeah. are under the nomination yep. and, and then getting charged individual tax rates aggregated with the individual's holdings. And then properties purchased after October 2019 are being charged surcharge rates. Yep. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And, and um, yeah, so it's going to be, it, it, it's complex. So you're going to want to purchase property in new trusts, I would suggest. Yeah, rather so, than using existing trusts. So yes. moving forward, if you're looking to use trust to purchase property, make sure they're new discretionary trusts. Mm -hmm. 
and make sure you cap mm -hmm. how much yep. you're buying in each trust. And so you only, and so it's so another question from Andrew. Um, you've said uh, when an amount from a personal in a trust as a beneficiary is aggregated, is there one or two thresholds? It's like, no, it's deemed to be owned. Uh, so if you make, if a trust makes a nomination to a person, we're only looking at that person's threshold. Uh, and so, so unfortunately, um, it'll be aggregated as if they own all of the properties. So um, it, it's, it's, it's rather unfortunate there. So now, of right. course, you can have two thresholds if you don't make the nomination. So if you don't make a nomination, the trust will be taxed at the trust surcharge rate, a slightly higher rate, but it'll be um, uh, you know, um, separate from the individual. So again, that's one of those things it'll depend on, like if the, if the individual has a lot of property, either in their name already, or from a number of other trusts that have nominated them, um, then that's when it may, might make sense not to nominate the trust. And then, and so then each trust that doesn't nominate can make, um, uh, will face its, um, its own marginal tax rate, a slightly higher rate, but often it can be better. And that's one of those things, play, play with the calculator um, and see what's best. So, Actions moving forward from here, get onto that calculator, play around with it, work out what you're gonna do immediately. That's really important. Make sure that you do get your letters from Revenue SA. And if you have not yet received your letter from Revenue SA, give it about a week. If you still haven't received it, please call Revenue SA and follow up with them as to why you haven't received your letter. Every landowner that owns an investment property should be receiving these letters from Revenue SA. Once you receive your letter, have a look at the, download the instructions that we're going to provide the link to, to make sure that you can follow the step-by-step -step and make sure that you complete the information that you need to complete in the Revenue SA portal as uh, complete as possible. This is really important. If you don't do this step, then you might be charged incorrectly for your land tax, yep. which could have big implications moving forward. And one thing that I notice is that, you know, Revenue SA is going to make mistakes with this and they have made, auto they've automatically made assumptions about how to group certain companies, how to group trusts, and they've already inputted them into the system. And if you don't go in there and fix those things before 3rd of June, then you might be overcharged land tax. For example, I know with myself when I went in, I noticed that they had grouped my self-managed super fund together with um, other entities that I had and self-managed super funds are supposed to be excluded mm. from the aggregation changes that have been brought in. So it's a bit sneaky, but I guess what I'm saying is that it's your responsibility to make sure that it's actually correct. Revenue SA will basically charge you land tax based on what is in that Revenue SA online portal. Mm. Yeah. And, ah. and you actually have requirements under the Act, you must tell them. And so they might, um, I don't think that they will penalise people at, at this stage for not making notifications, because I think just from an administrator's perspective, a lot of people won't. But what will happen is, is that um, they're probably going to make default assessment, like um, they will review things over the next 12, 24 months, yeah. like c continuously. So if you didn't, tell them about something, they will find, they'll find out and they will increase your land tax. Um, but if, you're, if you didn't tell them and, and your land tax should be decreased, they are unlikely to pass that on to you. So basically it's... Uh, and it uh, does say here in this letter, what happens if you do not log into Revenue SA online portal by the 3rd of June? It says any tax default that arises from your failure to provide the information requested may result in interest and penalty tax being applied to a land tax assessment. So let's not take that risk. <laughs> let's get on with it and let's get on to the Revenue SA online portal. Hopefully the notes and instructions that we've provided will help you. Shout out to Rue, Carla, Hannah. Thanks for joining us guys. We're keen to answer some more questions. I wanna move our attention to just some key dates mm -hmm. because there's some key dates coming up and we need to talk through those and then, we, and then we're gonna answer a few more questions that are mm -hmm. coming through. So we've talked about 3rd of June. So these letters from Revenue SA are asking for this, the online, the Revenue yeah. SA online portal to be completed by the 3rd of June. So that's not giving us much time. Well, they, they want it completed. Technically we have until 30th of June, but they yes. want it completed then. That's right. So, but try and get it done as quickly as possible. If you're, the, um, <laughs> One, I think um, if you have all the documents 
like, um, available to you, as you said, it's going to take you 20 minutes. I think where there's going to be a real problem is that when people read through all of the requirements, to be able to register to, to put in the details for their trust and then mm. lo lodge a notification, they're going to have to be running around getting a stat deck. They're going to have to run around trying to find their, their financial statements, find some tr some transfer documents from 30 years ago. That's like, a really good point. It's a lot of just administrative work. Running around. So, so that, that's all going to have to be done before you actually make uh, mm -hmm. complete your um, what you need to do on the portal. Mm -hmm. And I think also the important thing is that before you actually fulfill that component on the portal and complete the instructions on the Revenue USA letter, you need to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing from a land tax perspective and a structure. Yeah. So you need to have done the calculator that Adrian's gonna yep. provide us with. And you also need to have made sure that you've mm -hmm. got good advice around that yep. before you actually make those changes. Yeah. Now, question from Costa, you said that the time frame to nominate a beneficiary was before this end of financial year, but then it says you can nominate a beneficiary of a discretionary trust no later than 30th of June 2021. Yes, it's confusing, and yes, what um, that is correct. So it was originally that you could only nominate someone up to 30th of June 2020, and then they changed it right at the last minute to say, oh, we're gonna give you an extra year. Um, so you can nominate someone up to 30th of June 2021, but the land tax changes come into being as of 30th of June 2020. So if you don't nominate, then you will pay a higher rate of, uh, you will pay a, a, a trust, trust surcharge, surcharge right. this year. Now then you, um, then you can nominate next year. So for some people, what's gonna happen is, is they're gonna get a massive bill this year going, oh, I didn't even realize I missed these deadlines. And then they're gonna scramble and then make and try and make nominations for next year. And, um, and But that will mean that their the, tax bill for 20, 20, like 2021 yeah. or 2020 is very high. Correct, yeah. So, um, Goss, the answer is that yes, you do have up until 30 June 2021, but if you want to get in and make the nomination so that your land tax bill that you receive in around about October yep. is correct and as low as possible, then you want to make sure that you get your nomination in before 30 June 2020. And so you do have other obligations. You do actually, you do have a positive obligation to tell Revenue USA about land that you hold in trust. Yes. So, so it used to be the case that you just could you could own property and you didn't need to tell them about it and if they found out about it then they mm. could tax you now so, it's different correct yeah. and so even if you're not planning to nominate a beneficiary by 30 june 2020 you still need to complete the revenue sa online portal mm -hmm. before 30 june 2020. yeah yep. so correct. you still have to do this you still have to follow the yep. instructions on the letter and complete that even if you're not planning to nominate a beneficiary. That's an yep. important point. Uh, can, can I just put, point out a trap yes. that I, I noticed? Um, so in the nomination, it says um, you have to declare whether the person that you're nominating is Australian or not, or rather if they're overseas or not. Mm. So now, um, that technically it doesn't really affect your, your, your land tax. Um, one, it might be the case that they introduce a higher um, surcharge rate for land tax for foreign owners in the future. Um, just to, just be careful. It's happened in some other states. It's 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 something that might happen. So you'd here. say be a bit careful about nominating no. an, an overseas Person. resident. Yep, I'd be I'd be very careful. Yeah. I'd also be careful about it for stamp duty because if you have a discretionary trust uh, or a trust and one of the potential beneficiaries is a foreigner then you pay a higher um, uh, rate, you pay 2% extra, so up to 7%, say, okay. uh, of stamp duty um, when it purchases property in South Australia. So, you, so um, there's a lot of people who are purchasing uh, property in a trust in, a, in South Australia, um, and it's you know, a property that they've set up, uh, a trust that they've set up, they, they have never been overseas, um, and, but the way the trust is drawn, it includes all of their relatives and they've got relatives overseas. Yeah. Um, and so then that then technically it's a foreign trust. So when that trust goes out and purchases property, it's, it's gonna have to pay 7% stamp duty rather than 5%.
which is um, which is a, a massive massive trap. So I guess beware before yeah. nominating international or yeah. overseas people as your beneficiaries, mm -hmm. and make sure if you are planning to do that that you get a bit of advice before you do that, just to make sure there's not going to be huge cost implications. You think, yeah, think through it. And so you know when you're purchasing, and so what's happening is is they're getting a database of every trust that holds property in South Australia, and so and 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 you're declaring if it has um, someone who is a foreigner, foreign beneficiary of there. So uh, a lot of people will um, will we'll, we'll just go another purchase another property in there and then um, have to pay an extra two percent stamp duty. I wanted to touch on another key date that is mentioned in this letter and that is the 31st of July 2020. Mm -hmm. Revenue SA has said that that is the last day to provide notice that land is held in trust. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting because really they need you to do the online portal by the 3rd of June which effectively means that you're providing information about whether land is held mm -hmm. on trust. But then they're saying that when we've got the 30 June date and then we've got the 31st of July date, would you just say, just ignore the 31st of July date and just make sure that it's done by 30 June? Yes, yeah, I mean, the only just time- Just to you, keep things simple. I would absolutely, I, you should absolutely be planning for land tax before 30th of June yes. every year. It's, it's, a, it's a hard deadline. And the, the 31 July is um, it's because um, from if you, if you don't nominate by then or provide them if you don't provide them that information by then then they're going to start um, trawling through and uh, imposing penalties that's, and that's probably the date that they're also going to start preparing the land tax notices yeah with you know so I guess let's just ignore the 31st of July date and let's just say that everything needs to be done by 30 June preferably mm -hmm. by the 3rd of June but 30 June at the latest then what you can expect is after you've done the Revenue SA online portal, Revenue SA have said that we can expect our land tax bills to come mm -hmm. out in October. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be really important that you actually check this bill yeah. and that you make sure it's what you're expecting. And if there's any issues with it, that you actually, I mean, what can people do if they get their bill in October and they're surprised? Um, because it's not what they were expecting. Like, what would be your suggestion? Well, at that point? Um, so you're going to need to object now. Um, something you got to be really careful with, with for estate taxes um, is that you have 60 days to object, uh, um, uh, no questions asked, and you have up to one year to object um, uh, if you request an extension. You got, and you will often need to give reasons as to why you didn't put it in within 60 days. Uh, and these are hard time frames, and then if it's more than a year, you have no chance. Yes. So you need to act so you on need this to object quickly. Straight away. Yeah. The other thing that's really important is that when we were talking about the relief packages before, so that includes the transitional relief fund, also the relief packages around the affordable housing concessions, you can't actually apply for these until after you've received your land tax bill in October. So at the moment, you can just register your interest, but you can't actually apply for these relief packages. And my understanding is that the relief applications for the transitional relief fund will close in March, 2021. So you're gonna get your bill in October, if Revenue USA can get their act together and get them out by then, which <laughs> is questionable. Uh, you're gonna get your bill in October, and then you're going to have a few months to apply for the relief package mm -hmm. based on what your new bill is. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Correct. Yeah, um, and then you've got, uh, like we've said, the 30 June 2021 is the absolute last time to nominate a beneficiary, yep. but by then you've already paid for a full year of yeah. trust surcharge rates when you didn't need to. Mm -hmm. So um, they're the key dates. Is it, Have I missed out anything that you think No, I think that that's, that's important. Um, so just a question from Liesl. Um, uh, she says, thanks for the calculator, but my pleasure. I'm glad that you liked it. Um, with the land value, are you using the land or site value or the property value? So land tax is imposed on the on the site value, on, on so uh, so it's the value of the land without any improvements on there. And so if you can um, take that amount, you probably you see it on your council rates, you see it on previous land I tax think notices. Council rates can sometimes be confusing because on council rates they often use capital value. Yeah. And that actually includes the building. Yeah. So that's not the amount that you're going to be charged land tax on. So. The only way that you really know what the land value is, as as what the valuer general said, is previous land tax bills, yeah, um, or your new land tax bills that you're about to get. Yeah, and you know that um, the valuer general is, is doing a bump up in in land values. Yeah, so the valuer general is currently in the process of revaluating 
uh, revaluing every property in South Australia. Is that right? Yeah. And they've already done a couple of council areas. I think they've done Unley and yeah. uh, I know they've done a couple of council areas already, but they're uh, on a mission to make sure all the values are correct. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so that in itself could result in an increase in land tax moving forward. Yeah. But the I, I believe that's like a three-year program. So we won't necessarily know the impact of that in the next 12 months. It could take you know the next 24 months before that all unravels. Is that right? Yeah, and um, it's just it's just a nice way of um, kicking people when they're down. Oh. <laughs> Uh, we've got another question from Andrew. Do we have to apply for relief? Why is an automatic? I think the answer is yes, you do have to apply yeah. for relief and you can't do that until after you receive your land tax bill, which Revenue SA has said will be in or around October this year. And then you've got up until March to apply for relief. So that's really mm. important. Why is an automatic? Because... Uh, because then it would be too easy uh, yeah. to... <laughs> I guess they, they want people to work for the relief. Well, yeah, actually, I, I think, um, you see, governments don't design things from a user perspective. Um, what mm. they do is they go, we, we want to design things like, what is that we want? And we're going to make you give us all of this information. And um, so, like, if, if I was designing something that, that, that looked like this, you would say, you know, I'm going to, like, tell me the, these answers. Tell me... Um, like, let's make it a self-assessment um, and then we'll, then we'll audit it like such as the Australian Taxation Office does. It's more self-assessment. Whereas here they're going, no, you're going to give us every piece of granular detail so then we can, um, we can have it. So be careful because they do have a lot of information. Um, mm. I expect there to be a lot of um, uh, and I'm, and I'm assuming to, I mean, we don't actually know what the process is to apply for that relief at this point because it hasn't been announced, but I'm assuming that they're going to require, you know, evidence to prove that your land tax has increased and it's not just yeah. going to be a matter of filling out a form. I think that there's probably going to be a bit more that you have to do Show to that apply land for this relief. Well, it, um, for, for showing that your land tax has increased in an individual, it should be quite, that should be quite simple. Mm. Um, applying for the COVID relief, I think is, is going to be a pain in the ass. Yeah, so that will be interesting just to see how that pans out. Mm -hmm. And of course, remember that the relief packages are only available for individual landowners. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. not available for trusts and yep. not available for companies. Yeah. So that's also something to keep note yep. of. Um, I think we've got another question coming through. Do we have any more questions, Emily? Okay, I think we're all good for questions and we have run out of time. But what we are going to do to help you, like I said, you've got the link to the calculator. We are going to provide a link to uh, instruction sheet that I prepared over the weekend with some screenshots and some instructions to help guide you through the Revenue SA online portal. We will also upload a blog with a few links to the land tax rates and just some general information that we think might be useful for you. And we also will link you back to the detailed discussion that Adrian and I had back in December 2019. So hopefully with all of that information, you'll be well prepared to make some good decisions moving forward about what you should do and you can actually start taking action because it's really important that you do that, really important that you complete this work on the Revenue SA online portal and that you get the right advice as soon as possible. And just another reminder, if you are going to be changing ownership, please come and speak to us immediately so that we can actually start working out how that's gonna work from a bank perspective and what we're gonna do with the loan to make sure that that can all happen before 30 June. Because that in itself is going to be the most time consuming process yep, of everything we've talked about today. So definitely. is there anything else you wanted to add before we wrap it up, Adrian? No, uh, like we're, we're, I'm sure that everyone's really busy with COVID things and, and terrible disruptions to their life. And, um, and go, the last thing we wanna do is, is upload a whole bunch of forms to Revenue SA or, 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 or think, how should, I, how should I change my properties around it and, and then refinance? Like, but it, it, this, you can have a massive increase in your, mm. in your land tax. You know, a lot of people that I've seen, you know, it, it could, it, um, when they're having their trusts aggregated or their, their properties aggregated when previously they were disaggregated, you know, they're, uh, I've seen people go up in land tax, you know, 300% or something. Like it's, it's really, really it terrible. It is going to be pretty devastating for a lot of people, especially on the back of the financial impacts of coronavirus and many of the people that are going to be heavily impacted, you know, uh, mm. self-funded retirees who maybe are now dealing with reduced rent plus increased land tax. So 
it's going to have a devastating effect on some people but what is important is that everybody takes action and tries to minimise their land tax implications as much as possible mm -hmm. and the changes are legislated, there's no point arguing them or debating them anymore, it, it's the law, so now it's just a matter of moving forward, how do we play by the new rules, make sure that everything is sorted, dot mm -hmm. the I's, cross the T's and make sure that you're well placed 1st of July with your property portfolio and beyond. And Adrian gave some great pointers today as to how you can structure your properties moving forward. And I think the key takeaway that I took from that is don't be afraid of trust anymore moving forward. I mean, yes, there is a trust surcharge rate, but in some instances mm. that's still gonna work out better than paying increased land tax. So it's definitely not a sign that we should stop investing in property in SA. No. There's still good investment opportunities, and I think particularly in the next six months, I think there'll be some great investment opportunities coming out of uh, coronavirus, yeah. where you know there will be some good opportunities to buy. So definitely, hopefully this isn't putting you off buying and building your property portfolio and moving forward, because we'd love to support you in doing that. Property's still a great wealth creation asset, I think so, yeah. and um, definitely good opportunities moving forward. So hopefully today we've left you with some practical tips that you can take away with you and implement to help you. And we really appreciate you tuning in. If you've got any questions after this, please post them below or send us an email. And uh, between Adrian and Rise High, we will answer them for you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye.